Hi everyone, I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. In this shop and mostly haul video, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Mostly in this video, I'm going to focus on keywords. Keywords that help me search the item and keywords that I'm going to put in the title. I'm doing this is to show you that when you look at something that you buy to resell, how to analyze it that can help you with your search and your listing, your listing title. Good morning. This is another day of Saturday sourcing for resale. Good morning. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. It's Saturday. We're going sourcing to find things to resell on eBay, Macari, Poshmark, wherever. Come join me. We have some neighborhood sales, some garage sales. It's hard to film at some of these places. If this video exists, it means I found something. So keep watching for the haul and more. is open but we're gonna keep checking things out we have other neighborhood sales to go to today so not all hope is lost Out this guy who greeted us at this house is not that cool made from flower pots i have to say that's very creative we decided we're going to stop in at a few uh garage sales the neighborhood sales have been okay not great but okay so we're going to check out a few other sales we just found an unexpected sale at this church have to go check it out it's a lot of people here i spent five dollars at this little church sale and I'll have to show you what I found. We're heading towards Hidden Acres Neighborhood Sale. Yes, we are at Hidden Acres and I see cars. Hopefully there's a lot of houses open. At least we're at the first stop. We found a few things at this big garage sale. The whole basement was full. I thought they were eBayers, but they claim not. This is a Funko, little Noah set, Noah's Ark. And this kind of got my attention here, 25 cents for this little doggy. No markings though, but he looks older. So maybe. So much uh, shadowing, it's hard to video. Stopping at Pals for a milkshake. Pretty neat building, isn't it? And it's busy. Look at this line of cars. It's as busy as Chick-fil-A. It's a nice neighborhood here, and I see a large garage sale on the left. That was the North Fork of the Holston River. Mark, say that normal. I did. See what I have to put up with? Mark and I have been out all day sourcing, about six hours or more. And I didn't get to film a lot at the sales, you know, neighborhood sales, garage sales. There were just too many people around. I'm going to focus on keywords. Keywords that help me search the item and keywords that I'm going to put in the title. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you that when you look at something that you buy to resell, how to analyze it and figure out what key items you're seeing just from looking at it that can help you with your search and your listing, your listing title. And we're gonna play a little game. I've got three things I'm gonna show you right out of the gate, and I want you to guess which one you think has the most value. I have three items that I'm gonna show you from today's haul, and I'd like for you to guess which one you think has the most value. This hand-painted egg, hand-painted in Russia, this blue cookie jar or apothecary jar, or this plate. Leave a comment before we get started as to which one you think has the most value. The first thing I found today at a neighborhood sale is this hand-painted egg. 
Looks like it's a Christmas scene. It has some glitter in it, and it is signed on the bottom, but I can't read it. I assume it's in Russian. The lady had this humongous tag on it, hand-painted from Russia. So, okay, let's say I'm wanting to research this on eBay. Let's talk about keywords. Well, I know it's Russia. I know that it's signed. I know that it's hand-painted. It's an egg and has a wood pedestal. So those are some of the key words. I paid $2 for it, which I thought was pretty good. And I'm going to list this hand-painted Russian egg for th Sometimes it's hard to research items when you're at a sale. There were just too many people around. I was hoping this would be worth more than what it is. But what can I tell you? Yes, I have the paperwork, but let's take a look at this. It says crimp cut sealer. It shows photos of a variety of things, but in particular, I saw ravioli here. And I figured it was vintage just by looking at it, I guess mainly because it has a wood handle. So there you go, some of the keywords, crimp cut sealer, vintage, wood handle, paid a dollar for it, what's it worth? As I said, not as much as I had hoped, but I will be listing it for $14.95 plus shipping. If you know me and my simple sales a good profit, we're going to be all over the place today with items. This one is a vintage coffee pot. Or is it? I paid $2. Do you think it's a coffee pot? No. It's a vintage grease container. And what's exciting about it is that it still has its strainer. A lot of times these are missing. And it's pretty clean, even though I did clean it up after I got home. So I paid $2 for this. What can I tell you about it as far as research and listing? Let's turn it upside down. It says on the bottom, well, first of all, I would say that it's a grease container with strainer. And then I would add aluminum. It's also vintage and made in USA. I'm not sure that I need to put the USA in there, but I would put vintage. Vintage aluminum grease coffee pot container with strainer. That's pretty much how I would list it. Paid $2 for it and I'm listing it for $29.95 plus shipping. And it sold for $20 plus shipping. It's always good to have a few small items in your store. If you like smalls, not everybody does. This one came from the church rummage sale that we found unexpectedly. And when I saw Mary Moo Moo's, I just grabbed it up because Mary Moo Moo's do sell. What did I find out about it? Dear, you're wooly sweet. It is numbered and it's just resin and it's small, has little sheep on it. Again, keywords, Mary Moo Moo's, the name that they applied to it. I can put resin, I can put cow, I can put sheep. And do you see here, John Deere. Yep, John Deere. That's going to go in the title. I only paid 50 cents for it and I'm listing it for $19.95 plus shipping. These three boxed Precious Moments Christmas ornaments came from the church rummage sale. They were only 50 cents each. And of course they're plastic and it's so nice to have the box with it. So how would I list these? Precious Moments. I would put the name of the ornament. I would look for the number, like this one, 592366. You can see it was originally 1750. I'll just leave that on there. And I would put original box and original packaging, at least in my condition notes. So 50 cents each. I could only find this one on eBay. I couldn't find all of them, but still, I'm going to list each one of these box ornaments for $14.95 plus shipping with make offer. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. And by the way, I have my window open tonight, so you might hear some noise, you might even hear the birds, but it's just too nice to close everything up. All right, I picked these up at the church rummage sale, 50 cents each, so I paid a dollar for the two. They're brass, obviously, so how would I research these and list them? First of all, I would put brass one cup. I might even use the word goblet. I would put etched because it has an etched floral design. There's another key word. And I would put India because these are made in India. I paid $1 for the pair and I'm listing them for $24.95 plus shipping. And they sold on offer for $22.45 plus shipping. 
Well, this one should be pretty easy. This is a garage sale find and I paid $2 for it. And it says Fifth Avenue, Crystal, Wellington is the style. It's a whiskey decanter. And basically, that's all I need to know. As I said, I paid $2. It is brand new in box. I looked them up on eBay. And I'm going to list it for $24.95 plus shipping. I don't know how I could have found these two weeks in a row, but this is a little teapot. You probably recognize the pattern if you know this type of item. What is it? Here's some keywords. Corningware, six cup, and P104. But the pattern. Yes, you have to kind of learn your patterns on these. And this is called Cornflower Blue. Paid $1 for it. And I'm listing this for $29.95 plus shipping. I was pretty excited when I found these at a garage sale. One dollar each. What are they? Are they a vase? No. They are tiki mugs. It says Rum Haven. So I think it'd be good with a rum drink in there. It says Tiki Rob, R-O-B. They're ceramic. And look at this mermaid on here. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I was pretty excited. I know that tiki mugs sell really well. And I've already given you some of the keywords. Tiki mug, tiki rob, rum haven, mermaid, ceramic, lot of two. There you go. Paid $2. These have already sold on eBay before. And I'm listing my pair at $49.95. Yep, $49.95 plus shipping. And can you believe these two tiki mugs sold for full asking price of $49.95 plus shipping? Pay $2. This is a small candy dish. As you see, I paid $2 for it. And I apologize, I did not get this washed yet. So it would probably be more sparkly had I washed it. How would we describe this? How would we search this? I would search blue, candy dish, lidded, and what else? Well, you do have to do a little more work when you're working with glasses. And I did assume again that it might be Indiana glass. And it is, it turned out to be Indiana glass. Very happy for that. And it has a pattern style called Cubist. I don't know if you can see this three-dimensional design here. It was made in the 1960s, paid $2 for it, and I'll list it for $19.95. It's not going for a whole lot because there's quite a few of them out there. So $19.95 is my starting price. Found this little tiny egg. And I would consider this cloisonne because it has enamel that is surrounded by a gold. Um, it's gilded. You can see the feet here, it really shows up. It's a little trinket dish, meaning that it opens like this. It didn't have any markings. So I almost didn't buy it, but it was just too pretty not to. So for a dollar invested, what am I going to list this tiny thing for? Oh, by the way, some other keywords is footed, gilded, Cloisonne, I did say that. And of course it's an egg trinket dish. And hinged, that's something else I'll put in the title. I'm going to list it for $24.95 plus shipping. This is a set that features Noah's Ark. Looks like we have Noah, a lion, an elephant, and a rainbow. And it's home coat. And here's a number 1474. That one doesn't really show a number. That says where it's made, and that says nothing. I'm not sure if I have a complete set, but I do know that I have more than just Noah's Ark, which is what I found when I was checking comps on eBay. So what are some of the keywords? Obviously, Noah's Ark, Noah, Animals, Rainbow, Hongko, Home Interiors, and number 1474, and Porcelain. That's what it's made of. I paid $1.50 for all of these items. They were just in this bag. I'm going to list the set for $34.95 plus shipping. This was the hardest item for me to research today. Got it at a garage sale, paid $1 as you see. I know it's a candle holder and I know it's not old, it's not vintage. And all this crazing that you see here, it's faux crazing. It is false, it is fake. It doesn't have any branding. Why did I buy it? Well, I thought I could use the keywords farmhouse, country, farmhouse, candle holder, stoneware. I may put faux crazing in the title or at least in the uh, condition description so they know it's not older. 
Paid one dollar, couldn't find it anywhere, not on Google, not on eBay. So a little tougher for me, but I'm still going to list it at $24.95 with make offer and let the buyer decide if they think it's worth $24.95 when it has no brand, no name, no nothing. It may be unbranded, but it did sell for $26.95 plus shipping. People who love their pets also love to collect figurines of their pets. Not everyone, but a lot of them. As you see, I paid 25 cents for this little puppy dog. It says made in Japan. How would I list this? How would I research this? First of all, I did think it was a terrier dog, but I wasn't sure exactly what kind of terrier. After I researched it a little bit, I found out it's a white hair fox terrier. So in my title, I will put white hair fox terrier, ceramic, I might even put porcelain in the title, dog figure, I'll probably put tan and brown and gray for the colors. Pay 25 cents, I'll list this little guy for $14.95 plus shipping. At that same garage sale, I found this little figure. 25 cents again, little dog, looks like a terrier. It's a planter and no markings whatsoever, but it does look vintage just by looking at it. It's very pastel in the colors. So, you know, I started out with ceramic dog, planter, terrier. That's what I had to go on. And what I found out is that it's a Scottish terrier. So I'll put that in the title as well as figure and paid 25 cents. And I'll list this little guy for $19.95 plus shipping. At the same sale where I found the little dog figurines, I try to point out to you that I found a pink lamp. This little lamp never seen anything quite like it especially the shade it's very different it's um an unusual type of plastic and the base of the lamp this is plastic this is glass so quite unusual and it's very short so what did i have to go on short lamp vintage pink plastic glass shade that's about all i had so i had to do a little research on ebay and look at a lot of photos and i did find one like it that helped me out and some of the keywords, of course, other than table lamp, they use the word Levitin. Apparently there is a brand to this, Levitin. I have no idea how they know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I just find it? No, but I just saw that. You know what? There's a little issue here that I didn't see. It must have got hot or something. I didn't see that when I bought it. That's going to affect the value. Not too happy about that. And they use the word uh, boudoir. Paid two dollars and the other lamp was listed for around $34.95. But this table lamp did sell as is for full asking price of $59.95 plus shipping. Here's something that you might think I went a little bit crazy on today. Votive cups. Home Co. Sometimes made by Indiana Glass for Home Co. This is the diamond cut pattern and this is the hobnail pattern. And some of them need cleaned really bad. You can see there's some candle wax. We'll soak them in warm water. I've got amber, I have the red, I have green, I have clear, all different colors. I got these for 25 cents each. And the reason I bought them is that I know that they're worth anywhere from three to five dollars each. I'll have to go through them, clean them up, and decide if I'm going lots of two or lots of three or lots of four. I'm not sure yet. But if you check eBay, you'll find that the Home Co. Votive Cups can sell really well and for a decent price. So I decided since the price was right that I would stock up on them. Do you buy these to resell? I have 23 pieces and as I said they were three to five dollars each so over a hundred dollars in value. I've sold two of the green diamond votive cups for eleven dollars and ninety cents plus shipping. I sold one red hobnail votive cup for $5.95 and two red hobnail votive cups for $11.90 plus shipping. Do you pick these up to resell? The blue jar. Hmm. How much is this worth? First of all, let's talk about it. It's the size of a cookie jar. I don't think this would be a candy jar. It's way too tall. It's glass. It's the color blue. Apothecary works very well for the description. So I did have to spend a little bit of time on eBay researching this. Another thing about the design is it has panels. Do you see the little panels down each side? So that's something I can put in the description. But who made this? 
You know, with glass, there's seldom any markings on it. I mean, there's just nothing to go by. I suspected that it was Indiana glass, and after researching on eBay, I did identify it as Indiana glass, paid $2 for it, and I'm listing it for th This is a garage sale find for $3. Pretty ordinary, nothing too fancy. What can I tell you about it? Besides, it's a picture. I can tell you that it's pewter because it says it right there. I can tell you that it's number 431. And I can tell you that the brand is KHK and the pattern is Old Annapolis. There you go, everything's right there. Those are the key words for the title. And it's a water pitcher, but how much is it worth? I paid $3 and I'm going to list it for $29.95 with make offer. Bought this plate at a garage sale. She wanted $5. She said that a local antique shop had it for about $16. And I thought she was gonna stick to that five, but I finally got her down to three. And what is it? It says Spode, fine bone china, made in England. It has a number and a pattern, blue colonial. So how much is this plate worth? Is it worth more than the other two items? Some of the keywords, dinner plate, white, blue, gilded, spode, and all the other information that you see there, England, the pattern, the number, paid $3. Which one do you think has the most value? Leave a comment. This plate is worth one more chance to guess which item has the most value, the hand-painted egg from Russia, the Indiana glass apothecary jar, cookie jar, I'm going to reveal which one has the most value. And I'm going to list this hand-painted Russian egg for $39.95 plus shipping. I did identify it as Indiana glass, paid $2 for it, and I'm listing it for $39.95 plus shipping. And it sold for full asking price of $39.95 plus shipping. This plate is worth $89.95 plus shipping. Replacements.com would like about $98.95. I think I'm going to put mine at $89.95 plus shipping. So the plate wins the day for being the most valuable item. Which one did you guess? And if you guessed it earlier in the video at the beginning, you can always go back and edit your comment and add some more thoughts about this video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I invite you to subscribe and like and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. I'll see you soon. Simple sales for good profit.